system, digital or uh, system that we're referring to. And if we can go to the next slide, we can illustrate why we have been promoting this. And I'll get a little, few more slides in terms of where we are in the process of development, etc. So uh, we've mentioned many times before in this uh, in this forum that. Uh, one of our major concerns in all of this is that when we do start to see travel resume, and you saw from the uh, economics report as well as uh, references that uh, Willie had made in some of the slides that he had presented, that um, we are seeing signs of that. Uh, problem is that in the current situation, it's a mess. There is virtually no consistency out there. And as a result of that, we are what used to see uh, travel time, the processing, whatever we talk about, check-in, security, immigration, etc. around an hour and a half. Well, we're now somewhere around three hours, and eventually we will expect that to be, uh, as we progress, we we're expecting that to be somewhere in the range of 75% level. We could probably see around five and a half hours. And then la lastly, at 100%, we're estimating that it would be somewhere around eight hours. Completely unsustainable. On a deterrent to travel and uh, just not acceptable. And so, if you move to the next slide, it's primarily why we've been promoting a digital way forward. Now, we've developed a travel pass, and there's multiple apps out there, multiple. There, we could spend the rest of the day talking about how many examples there are of that. But we built a travel pass with the airline industry in mind by the airline industry, guided by the airline industry, to meet the needs of what we require when it comes to traveling. Some very fundamental pieces of this, built by security, by design, no databases, all information exists on the passenger's uh, mobile device, and they, they choose to share it with who they wish to share it with. Uh, accuracy, it's based on thematic. Now, we've talked about that in the past as well on these and during these forums. Thematic is the, the brains. Thematic has the rules. Thematic is accepted globally. And as an example today, just on just just with respect to COVID, we're, we're averaging about 200 updates a day for all the changes that take place globally in terms of uh, governments deciding what they want and what they don't want. Again, uh, accuracy is important. Verifiable, we're using existing standards uh, the use of your passport information and the standards that have been developed by ICAO to identify who you are and to verify that, which is very important. And then it's linked to an existing process, as I mentioned before, designed to support the airline industry. So linked to what we have today so that we can enable all these things that we've seen developed over the course of the last number of years, whether that's mobile check-in and all the other uh, things that we're used to when it comes to travel. And this needs to take place and needs to be linked properly in order for that to be uh, to be possibility. Next slide, please. So the app itself and what I've learned and not being a techie and being more an operationally driven individual is that apps are never complete. And so it is a work in progress and probably will continue to be a work in progress for many years to come as we learn uh, from what our consumers want. We learn from what our airlines want. We learn from what the governments want as well. But at the moment, it is available uh, on, the, uh, on both uh, Android and Apple. Um, passengers now can import their itineraries, which is important, obviously, because that will key and trigger what is required of them where they're going. Um, it is. Uh, it has all the latest regulations with respect to COVID uh, locations in terms of where labs can be. It can scan your QR codes. It can scan vaccination QR codes. Uh, it, so it, it is essentially where it needs to be, and that's from the latest release in the middle of June of uh, last month. And uh, more more features uh, continue to be developed, and will will be rolled out over the course of the next. Uh, the next number of weeks taking us out at the moment right now in terms of what we determine as priorities to the end of August. Uh, some of those include uh, minors and being able to deal with that, different types of ID uh, documents beyond uh, the uh, just the simple use of a passport. So lots of work being done, lots of accomplishments at this point. Uh, the app is where it should be at the moment and more to come as we move forward. 
In terms of penetration, uh, and the, in terms of uh, where we are at the moment, we're looking at around, it's actually uh, in excess of 170 routes at the moment. We're on every continent, uh, and we have 70 air, 74 airlines that are trialing it uh, at various stages. Some are, uh, are uh, in the middle of the trial, some are just starting them, some are expanding them. Uh, as we see a number of airlines looked at to increase the uh, usage of this and to continue to learn from it. So the, uh, the reach continues to grow uh, and uh, we anticipate that it will be the case as we move forward. And that does provide us with, as I mentioned, the learnings that we would expect it to give us. Because as mentioned, no place in the world is doing this and uh, approaching this the same way. In terms of coverage for the lab, this is also an ongoing and moving target. So, and probably of all of it, an area where we were challenged the most. So we have signed agreements with uh, with Unilab and uh, and uh, others, uh, Eurofins. Um, we're over a thousand labs now. That grows by the day, and will continue to increase that uh, that coverage as we move forward. And uh, as indi indicated in the next slide, you'll see we just recently announced. Um, a self-registration portal, which will help increase our our lab capabilities across uh, across the network. As we bring more airlines on and more routes on, uh, we will also bring more labs on. And this is a an ongoing, uh, continuing work in progress. And uh, no real major concerns in this regard uh, in this area. Uh, slow start, but certainly now we're beginning to see uh, strength in numbers in this regard. Next slide, please. So a lot of what we did when we developed was around testing. So as those who have been listening to us and on about ITP and a travel pass for, for months, uh, a lot of our work have been focused on the testing capacity because we believe that testing would have been a way forward to see more travel uh, now than we currently are in. But So now we've put our focus on vaccinations as well. And we are running a trial right now with Qatar Airways to be able to utilize the QR code from vaccinations in that country to be able to be utilized in the travel pass to test uh, the functionality. And uh, that is a, a continued work uh, effort and uh, anticipate that we will uh, learn from that as we move forward as well and uh, encourage the governments to get uh, uh, to, to learn from this as well, because there are certain priorities that we require from vaccine certification. Um, and we need to learn from these so that our governments can understand that, you know, we need countries to issue digital certificates for their citizens because paper just doesn't work. Now, we will have the ability to upload, however, and that, that is not as, as in a perfect scenario, each individual citizen will be given a digital certificate. It needs to be readable. So it cannot only be used by the government, but readable and usable by the industry itself to allow for, for travel. Acceptance is another thing, because right now, at the moment, that's not a given. And even in the same country that it's actually registered in. So acceptance may not be a given that while you may have a QR code from a, or a piece of paper, it does not mean that, the, that it's currently going to be accepted by your own government, let alone another government. So acceptance is important and advanced sharing, which allows us to do a lot of these testing and verifications and okay, provide that okay to travel before you get to the airport, which will be critical to allow for better processing time. Next slide, please. And last slide, um, while I don't allow the team to think too much about the future, because right now we still have a lot of work to do. We are nowhere near where we need to be. However, in terms of where Travel Pass has a potential for future beyond this pandemic, even though it's maybe difficult for those to see it, is in the contact us travel and the use of biometrics. So this is not, Pass is not designed for one of uh, scenario to get us through COVID. This is meant to last, uh, have a long lasting effect in terms of how we travel, to unlock the contactless travel uh, that we've been talking about for years and unlock the use of biometrics, which our customers have asked for, as our airlines have asked for as well, and to allow for a better, more seamless uh, travel experience as we move forward beyond the pandemic. Thank you very much. Great. Thank